Hallelujah. Thank you, Jehovah. Father, we bless you, we praise you, and we honor you. God of heaven, what an awesome, awesome celebration we are having this morning. Celebrating you for your goodness and faithfulness to us as a, as a family of your people, you know, church family, individually, and of course, biological families. Thank you, more so. And the, even the elements agree with us. Amen. That you are a good God. Whether it's nice, sun is out. We are enjoying up and down the country. Your goodness of giving us such beautiful weather. Thank you, Daddy, for your faithfulness. We are so grateful. Jehovah, we thank you for this time of your word. But it is not just started now. The service has been on. What an awesome rousing fellowship. We, you know, worship that we had. Thank God for, for a fountain of praise. We just bless you for the prayers. To thank you for the for the testimony and for celebration. Amen. So 17 years old today. What an awesome time they are having in their life. Seeing your goodness. It's so good, Jehovah, as you lead us, Father God, to be custodians of these young lives. Help us, O oh God. The, the, the maturity and the wisdom that we need to be able to engage them in your way. So that, Father God, as your, as your word says, when they are old, they will not depart in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, for this service. I just bless you. You are you are flowing, oh God, in your glory. You are flowing, Father God, in your power. You are flowing amongst us. We feel you. We sense you. Above all, I want to touch you today and have an experience, oh God, a life change, a life transforming for the better, for progress, that God, your touch will add more and more value to us, to our lives, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father God. Oh, I just bless you and I honor you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen and amen. And again, a very good afternoon, Kingdom, Kingdom Gospel Church. Glad to have every one of us on the call. Indeed, our friends, our supporters, and partners across the globe connecting with us through social media, Facebook, YouTube, however you're connected, and whatever time it may be in your culture, in your continent, in your in wherever you are, may the Lord minister to you and bless you immensely as He's doing so just now for us in the mighty, mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. A church, by the grace of Almighty God, we continue today our Financial Excellence 2023. Yes, we are still on it. Today is part number seven. We may have a part or two to go because we are expecting our, our financial advisor, the minister of God who works in the area of finances, the man, his grace and another by God to speak in the area of investment, financial uh, uh, finances and all of these things. He's coming to us uh, uh, next Sunday, God willing. And so we have a, a, another session to go next Sunday, but it's been awesome since April we began. We've done six teaching, six parts. Today's part number seven. And today I want to speak on a topic, a brand new topic that the Lord gave to me, gave to me, I beg your pardon, for this year, 2023. I've never spoken on this matter before. So it's interesting for me to hear from God, develop it, and bring it to you. It's the first for all of us. Amen. It's not a repeat message. Never thought of it before. Is the topic of, hear me, mismanagement. Aha, mismanagement. Wow, yes, God is in, in the business of management. But he didn't ask me to speak on management. It could have been so easy. You know, um, for, uh, um, we were talking about financial excellence. We must stay financially astute and understanding. It means we must develop management skills to manage our time, our finances, manage ourselves. Or, you know, that's the, what God said, no, speak about mismanagement. Because sometimes when you speak from the negative, people appreciate the positive. So we talk about health and healing. We, but when you, people begin to realize the impact that sickness can make in their lives, then they appreciate health and healing even more. I believe that's from that angle, God said to me, speak on mismanagement. Amen. And I'm going to do that, taking the text out of the gospel of Luke chapter number 15. Amen. Verses 11 to 16. I'm sure you know this story very, very well. Luke chapter 11, uh, 15, verse number 11 to 16. That is where we are going to be taking our cue from, from the scriptures this morning. The topic is mismanagement, part number seven of Financial Excellence 2023. Here we go. Then he said, who is speaking there of the Lord Jesus the Christ? He said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. Whose livelihood? The father's livelihood. 
God, what a, what a story we're about to hear this morning. Amen. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. The word prodigal means wasteful. Wasteful. Verse 14. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he, that is the citizen, now sent him, the prodigal boy, into his fields to feed swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods. <laughs> and he would gladly have he would gladly, <laughs> he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate. Eight. And no one gave him anything. What a story. What a way to start the teaching. But God wants us to understand that when he blesses us and gives us opportunities, when he gives us wealth, when he gives us people, he gives us money, gives us any kind of resource. We must learn to manage them properly. Amen. The story doesn't just start from this. A certain man had two sons. He started a little, a little. I mean, this is the text. No, no doubt. I'm not adding to the Holy Scriptures of God. Listen, the, the real story doesn't just start from when the boy comes to his father. Amen. In fact, can I read it again, church, please? A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that fall to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. Please notice it is not the boy's livelihood. It's not the boy's, the children's livelihood. It's the father's livelihood. Basically, was saying, Father, give me the portion of inheritance that belongs to me. I wish you were dead. Just give me. So the story didn't start. Amen. Some things pre oh, preceded. We don't know what it is. But I think something happened to this boy inside of him. Amen. And by the grace of God, with the help of the Holy Spirit, we'll try and unpack them as we, as we go along this teaching. Mismanagement. Church. Ah. Management is a very critical, it's very critical in life. Mismanagement kills. Let me just be open and say it now as it is. Mismanagement kills. Management is critical. So we both, we know from both scripture and life stories that we have heard of people who were greatly blessed with all kinds of resources. Okay, we're talking about money. With finance, financial resources. But they lost everything. They did. At one time, they were listed in in amongst the rich, among the up, amongst the upper class, upper class, among the those who occupy the upper echelon of society, they had it, they had they had it all, they had it, they had everything going for them, rich, super rich in the world, with all the all the all the trappings of success, amen. But they lost everything. Mismanagement has led to company failures, big multinational corporations, global trading. I mean, if banks have failed. Amen. <laughs> uh, marriages have broken down. Uh, company failures. People losing life savings. You name it. Because of poor management or mismanagement. So what exactly is mismanagement? But first of all, let's look at the, the concept of management before we look at the, the mismanagement. Let's say the management is the positive side, the good side. And let's say mismanagement is the, is, 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 is the negative side, the bad side. So let's look first of all, what is, what is management? Management is the process of dealing with or controlling things or people. Control things, put them in order. Amen. You tell them what to do, create rules, regulations. You create boundaries, managing, organizing, administration, and every process that goes with it. Management is how businesses organize and direct their workflows. The way, the way they work will do, the pattern, the shifts, if you will. Amen. Their operations. What to do from raw materials I use manufacturing to the end result. If it's a supply chain, where to pick the goods from and where to deliver to and the routes to take to be cost effective. 
Amen. To avoid traffic, and the what kind of uh, petrol or diesel that will cost will save money and not be costly. So operations, and and and, and of course the organizer and direct employees to meet company set goals or set targets. Management exists to achieve set goals or set targets. There is no management that doesn't have an end result that they are pursuing or hoping to make. Amen. Even in your family, you have a desired result. You have an end goal that the child or children will be what turn out responsible, better in life, better than you as we pray. That, 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 that your home will be successful. That the enemy will not have his way to, to destroy that with God and you are building. Amen. It's about man. That is all of that is. It's what we mean by management. You have to wake up at a certain time to prepare the young child to go to school and the pack their lunch or pay for them to have lunch at school. All of that you are is management. Direction, setting limits, setting boundaries. You wake up and so you go to bed and so you take your sister and so you eat, don't eat late, you eat early, and all of that is management. Whether it's people or things or processes in the workplace, in the marketplace. The primary goal of management is to create an environment that lets, that lets the, the employees work efficiently and productively. Amen. Efficiently, not wasting resources, and productively to get the desired results. Management can be categorized either as bad or good. No, let's, okay, add good or bad. Amen. Let's not talk about put the bad in front. Let's put the good in front. Amen. So management can be categorized as either good or bad. Good management is characterized by success. Good managers, good, good management has results, set results. Amen. Meet targets, meet deadlines. Amen. Arrive on budget. Projects are done on budget, even with savings. But bad management is categorized by failure. Oh my God, somebody is really deep. And uh, yes, it's supposed to make us sit tight and listen deeply. It's about your finances. You are the manager of the resources that God has allowed you to earn or to make. Amen. It, it, it's your bank account, it's in your pocket, bank, banks or wallet. But how do you manage it? You cannot be financially excellent if you are a bad manager of resources. Oh, I will come to that. What makes a bad manager? Amen. You cannot be financially buoyant or or not or not. Come on. You will not. If you, we need to learn and to know, amen, how to manage every penny and every pound that comes into our life. Amen. Thank you, Jehovah. <laughs> For now, I bless you and I honor you. And so management can be categorized as either good or bad. It's not even the, a board of directors now, or a committee, it's not even the CEO, it's not even the, the manager. I'm talking about you as the manager, as the CEO of your life and of your no, of your resources. Let's say Jesus is our CEO, but you are the manager of your finances. It's not in Jesus' accounts, it's in your bank accounts. It's not in Jesus' wallets or bags, it's in your bags, it's in your book pockets, it's, it's in your hands. But how do you manage? Some of us, can I be honest with us, are good managers of our finances, prudent, diligent. Some of us are poor managers. Can I be? Can I say it? Bad managers. Amen. Poor management decision regarding your finances. Some of us actually bet and gamble. For example, to spend now waiting for the salary to come, and before the salary comes, it's already taken up by the current. Overspend you've incurred. So by the time the salary comes, it clears everything you have down to almost zero. You now live off. That's poor management. And honestly, I cannot give, I cannot cover every specific example, but I speak generically. I'm sure you are you are you are, you are following and tracking with me. So then that's management. Okay. Now let's let's define uh, mismanagement. What is mismanagement? Simply define. It is the process of managing something badly or wrongly. Amen. Mismanagement occurs in every area of life and can affect one person, some people as a family of, of more than two or three, okay, and, and, and many people, a nation. For example, economic mismanagement has resulted in economic recession, affecting a whole country, a whole nation like us. 
Only the last uh, few weeks we've been told that Germany has entered into a recession. And of course, the UK, we've been in, in and out of recession. Some are even doubting if we're even out of it because the cost of living is going, is, is going higher. In fact, it's soaring higher and higher by the passion of every day. It's a global recession where many factors fit into it, but some of the, the, the reasons is because of poor economic decisions. And of course, with the changing of governments, political parties, uh, elections, policies are job policies, are, uh, new policies come into play, and so there's no continuity or whatever may be good. And so all kinds of factors collide, amen, collude, should I say, to make the nation economically poor based on decisions taken by those we trust to lead and guide us nationally. Another example I could give is of our people, amen, who come into sudden wealth, perhaps through winning the lottery, I'm sure you never national lottery, or through some inheritance by uh, their parents or some relatives. We are told statistically that about 70% of these people end up losing everything. Mostly, largely due to wasteful spending. There's a website, it's called lovemoney.com. And I had to quickly look at it last night. <laughs> so I was refreshing my spirit with this word, lovemoney.com. Go and look at that. Uh, there were eight, eight, 28 slides of people both here in the United Kingdom and abroad in the US who came into lottery, who won lotteries. They meant 28 of them. <laughs> And at the end of, of, of the story, basically people, even those who were entrepreneurs, who made money, were in business, pump out, win in the lottery, lost everything in a matter of years. Some as, as few as three, four years. This is good money in the millions, amen, both in the UK pound sterling and the US dollars. Love, please check it out later, lovemoney.com website. You see the you see, the, 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 the slideshow is there for everybody to see. Men and women, women and family, in fact, couples who want together, not just lose the money, they divorced and the marriage broke. One of them lost money and was in the streets homeless for two years after winning over $3 million, two point something million pounds. Why did it happen? Mismanagement. Let's go to our text, people of God. You must be wondering. <laughs> then the Lord told us this parable about a certain man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, the father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. His livelihood. I wonder how many fathers. I am a father. I got two beautiful children, a boy and a girl. Well, a young man and a young woman. Amen. You don't call them boys and girls and a boy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Young adults, as we call them. I can, let me try and put myself in the father's position. My son comes to me and says, Father, um, give me the portion of inheritance that belongs to me. I'm alive. I'm still working. But God's just investing and gathering more goods. And the young boy comes, the young man comes to me and says to me, I wonder what my reaction will be. I wonder what I will tell him. Amen. I'm still alive. I'm still working. Amen. It, that itself is a point. I'm not at the end of my of my of my of my journey just yet. There's I still have so many miles to go, so many days and weeks and months and years to go to earn more, to gather more for you and your, your brother. You wish me that? And so when we read this story, it didn't just start from where we are, the text that we said that way before the boy's mindset and his thinking and what was going on in his life. That will make him come to his father. I pray, parents, that will be aware. Well, we cannot be fully aware because the height is wrong. But we will have a good instinct. I pray by the Holy Spirit, I will have an idea. I mean, the word idea of what's going on in our young people's lives. What will make or push this young boy to come to his father? This the junior. There's two of them. He's the younger of them. What will push him to the point of coming? I do have a suggestion. I have an idea, and I'll share that in a minute. To come and say to his father, give me. And his father did not even debate, did not argue. And sometimes you need to let them go through the process to find out. Sadly, he lost everything when he went through the process. So he divided 
is to them his livelihood. So he gave to, he gave to the elder boy and gave to the younger younger boy. The elder boy stayed home. I believe left the goods as they were. They touched them. But the younger boy, not many days later, of course, packed his things and then gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, not close by, far. I'm sure you know far is far. Amen. And there, wasted. The Bible is very, very, very clear on what happened. The boy wasted his livelihood, his possessions. Not, not, not his, because his father already gave it to them. So it was, it was the father's livelihood, but at the point the divine gave it to them, it now become the boys, his, his possessions with prodigal, wasteful living. But when he has spent everything, there arose a, a, a severe famine in the land. <laughs> and then and, and he began to be in want. Amen. As they say, nothing lasts forever. Amen. Then he went and got a job. He went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him to the office, uh -uh, to the warehouse. Uh -uh. He sent him to the fields, to his fields. Open fields. Amen. The rain will pour on him. The sun will beat on him. To do what? To feed pigs, swine. Mm. And, and they would have gladly filled his stomach with the pods that the swan ate. They didn't even give him pig's food. And no one gave him anything. He would walk. I believe they would pay him. They would go and buy his food. They did not even give him pig's food. What a story to tell. You know, sometimes you read these stories in the Bible. It's a parable. You shudder. You shake. As a parent, put yourself in this position. What would you do? What has driven this boy to this point? If we're going to be financially excellent, church, we must learn to make decisions. We must learn as parents this time to say no to some demands. We must learn to put our foot down or our feet down. Sometimes it takes both feet. We we'll say, uh -uh, boy, we're not having this. Amen. This thing could destroy you. Hallelujah, church of God. Okay. What do we read? What do I learn? Let me share my experience of what I've learned, my lessons I've learned. Like I said, the story didn't just begin with us reading the text. It began with something happening in the boy. This boy was driven by a desire to live the good life. He would have seen his father, saw the estate, he saw the success. He dreamed of the success. Oh, he dreamed only to live a successful life. He dreamed only to, to, to have so much, uh, maybe staff, maybe servants, maybe a big house, maybe, you know, have, you know, live in splendor, in opulence. He, he saw his father. He saw that he was, in, he was at home. He saw everything that his father had. He, maybe his mother, we are not talking about his mother. He saw people come and go. The honor, the respect his father commanded. He desired that life. But, but what he forgot, what he didn't know, should I say, is that his father worked for it. He didn't want to work for it. So he says, give it to me. <laughs> There's a reason why we work, people. Amen. Those of us who work value every pound, every dollar. Amen. <laughs> that we earn. Oh, my, 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 my. When you remember the weather, you have to go to, to get that pound of penny. You won't spend it. You won't, you won't be wasteful with it. When you know the effort, the sweat, the toil the spin, sometimes the blood you have to spill to get to where you are, you will value what God has brought to you. So the boy had a desire to live the good life. Well, good life is a result, amen, of God's blessing us and, of course, walking the blessing. Amen. His father didn't argue. Amen. Would you have... Maybe I would have. No, you would have said no. I'm not ready. <laughs> I care for you. It's about a long time, not temporary. Oh, come on. Let me continue. And so his, his father gave him. But, 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 so this boy was driven by a desire to live the good life. The good life is a result of your maybe hard work, maybe your business acumen, or your expertise in a particular realm or field or sphere of work. It doesn't just land on your lap. 
You have to work for it. It's a result. Success is a result. Achievement is a result. Nobody achieves just sitting and doing nothing. Oh, you will achieve failure, all right. But listen, if you're going to achieve something, you have a goal, a target. And when you do achieve it, you are successful. And of course, success has good results, recognition, and of course, return on your success and everything that follows. He saw it. He liked it. He wanted it. He desired it. So he thought the route to it was to go ask his father to give him. Number two, the boy had a covetous mindset because he desired his father's goods, not his own goods, not what he worked for, but for what his father had worked hard for. Uh, what kind of success is that? Yes, thank God for inheritance. I believe God, according to the Bible, uh, the righteous lives an inheritance for his children's children. So my children's children will eat of the fruit of my labor in Jesus' name. Let me shout a big amen. And so also for you in Jesus' name. I say amen for you as well. But wealth inherited is not the same as wealth gotten, amen, or worked for. There's a difference. He had a covetous mindset. He dreamed. He desired a good life. Not to work for it. No. But what? Covet. He had a covetous mindset because he desired his father's goods. Not his own. Or what he worked for. So what did he do? He got the money. He got everything. The Bible says he traveled to a far country. Do you know why? To avoid accountability and scrutiny. Because if he was around his family, around his father, I'm sure his father would say, what are you doing with those so many luxury cars? How many cars can you drive in, 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 at, at a time? You, you bought a 10-bed house? Are you married now? How many bedrooms will you sleep in one night? Um, when people want to avoid scrutiny and accountability, what do they do? They go far from you. Amen. It happens also to us, amen, when children and us, even parents and others are doing things, we, we avoid scrutiny and accountability, things that are not right. Adam went to hide. <laughs> Hallelujah. Church of God. Oh, we're talking about Adam. Mismanagement. Amen. He had everything going for him. He had the home in the garden. He had the wife and everything. Oh, Adam, yes, he did. How? Negligence. Where was he when the enemy came? And started the conversion. He was told to what? Tend and keep. The word keep means to protect, defend. Where was he? He was told not to. When his wife gave him, he ate. Why did he eat when his father told him not to? Poor decision. And so Adam, who had everything in the garden, what happened? He was driven by his own father out of the garden. He lost it. He lost everything. Mismanagement. Oh, back to this boy. Amen. He struggled to factor to avoid, avoid accountability and scrutiny. He indulged in wasteful living, thinking, Perhaps there was no tomorrow. He's always he, he grew up in that house. I believe his father's house, seen food and and all this drink and everything. He thought it was always like that. Just have some money and you will live forever. Oh, money does not end, really. As far as this side of creation is concerned, amen. As far as this side, as for long as the earth remains, amen, there will be beginning <laughs> and end of everything. Only outside of this creation, this side of creation. In eternity, there's no end. Amen. So he indulged in wasteful living, thinking perhaps there's no tomorrow or that the money will last forever. But you and I know, people of God, that nothing lasts forever. Only eternity lasts forever. Number five, he spent all the money. Where? How? Consumption. <laughs> so a covetous mindset. And his desire was to what? Live the good life. The good life, how? Live big, live large, as we say in the southern part of the world, where I come from, obviously. But it's consumption. And so you throw the big parties, you invite all the dignitaries, because it's a consumption. Production is not consumption. Consumption is not production. But we have the DNA. We are told to do what? Be fruitful, to multiply, and to replenish the earth. Production is what God told us. But we've turned the mandate into consumption. So in certain parts of the world, like where I come from, 
the bigger consumption you have, the more people think you have. But some of people live on borrowed money, borrowed resources to live big. All of that is not only self-deception, it's public deception. Amen. Oh, Jehovah, thank you, Lord. He spent all the money consumption. It is not concerned of people of God that perpetuates life, but what? Production. The more you produce, the more life goes on. Imagine if we were not fruitful. Imagine if we didn't, if we didn't multiply or replenish the earth. The earth would be devoid of anything human and everything human. So life perpetuates on what? Production. He got the goods. The boy got the money. What happens? He consumed everything and was for living. Life was about to end for him. And so if you and I are going to be financially excellent in this year, as the Lord is teaching us, we must learn to manage our resources properly. Not on prodigal living, not on wasteful spending, but on that which will produce more fruit. Oh, they will produce more, more, more resources for us. All that life goes on swiftly and comfortably in Jesus' name. Is it investment, part-time job, part-time trade? What can you do online with technology invading our lives and, and helping us to change our ways of working? Look at Amazon, look at Uber, technology-driven massive enterprises. Don't even have a shop front. Amen. But doing more, you know, raking in billions every year. Find something in this new world of, 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 of global industry using technology. Find something you can do. Learn a skill. Hallelujah. So it is not consumption, amen, that determines the quality of life, people. It is production. I've often said it before. They give you a job of 50,000 pounds per annum, 50K. Yes, good job. Good money. Really? Not all that 50K is yours. Amen? At the end of the, of the, of the month or at the end of the year, look at what comes into your bank account. That is what is yours. The tax man takes this and all the other things takes theirs. Whatever you have left to return, that is, yes, I know it's 50,000 pounds on paper. But will, he, will the tax man uh, let you take all the money? Uh-uh. <laughs> Please, let's learn to be wise. Hallelujah. And so he began to be in want. When the family hit the far country, he relocated to. So it wasn't the country that could sustain him. It was what he had. It is what you have. That, it doesn't matter where you are. Even in, in the most drought reading country, if you have resources, you will survive. If you don't have anything, or resources, a problem. You may be in a rich country like the US, like the UK, and other parts of Europe, amen? But if you don't have anything, you'll be homeless. And so it is not the country. Uh -uh. You travel to a far country. No, no, no. It is, it is what you have. And the question is, do you have? What do you have? How are you managing what you have that you may be financially excellent so that when the drought or the famine hits, you have more than enough to go to that dry season of your life or the, or the country, as the case may be. And I will thank you. I hope somebody is, is following what the Holy Spirit is saying to us this morning, this afternoon. So it's, so it's not the country. People are here in, in England, in the UK, where we are based. Oh, with all kinds of financial challenges. The country has money. Yeah. Come on. It, it is, it is, it's you amen, and your desire and your determination to succeed. Amen. To do what you need to do to, to be afloat, to break even and, and to make profit. That we see you do well in any country. No, he ended up point number seven. He ended up getting a job in the field to feed pigs. He was not even given a job to feed human beings. This is what mismanagement can do to people. He was. It wasn't even. It wasn't. He couldn't get a job to work with. Other human beings who may have compassion or mercy, show him love and say, okay, have this and have that. Huh? He was now working with pigs, feeding pigs. Ah. And I believe he would have gladly ate the food of the pigs, but they didn't even give him any. The last point is to say to us, people of God, that this young man fell from having everything to having nothing. He fell, as we say, from grace to grass. He fell from having everything to having nothing. How? Poor management. 
mismanagement. Did you notice that everything he got from his father, when he, if you read later in the chapter, when they went back home, nothing came with him. Everything he, that he took out of the home, nothing came back with him. He came back even less. He felt less of a son. Let me just be a servant. That is what mismanagement, poor management. If he taken the goods, went to the far country, invested, doubled and multiplied it, would be saying, wonderful. Father would be proud. But what did he do? He had the opposite mindset, consumption. He desired a good life. He wants to live large, live well. But he didn't have the work ethic. He didn't have the mindset to be profitable, like we've taught before. He didn't have... He, 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 all, all, he, all he was about was to eat and to live large, to live big. It was all about consumption. So if you are going to be, if we are going to be people of God, you know, financially excellent, we must curb our appetite or consumption levels to the barest minimum and focus more on what production, consumption will destroy, or production will make us live longer. Have comfortable lives in the mighty name of God. Production is to be fruitful in every area of life. It's fruitfulness. Do I need to remind you of John 15, verses 1 to 5? Oh, come on, church. Let, let me, let, let's go to John 15, 1 to 5. And I'll share with you only four principles today. And I'll bring it to a close. Amen. I hope somebody is being blessed today. Amen. We are talking about mismanagement. What to avoid. Run from it. If you don't have to make those decisions, ask people, seek counsel, pray. The Holy Spirit is there to teach us, read books, talk to people in the field, the experts in the field. Even if you have to pay for an hour or to get knowledge, to cancel, pay for it. Because at the end of the day, it will be valuable to you. You would have learned something to, to, to implement to make your life better. John chapter number 15. Let's take it from verse 1 to 5. I am the true vine of my father's divine blesser. The Lord Jesus Christ speaking to him. Every branch of me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that he may bear more fruit. You already claim because of the word I spoke to you. Abide in me and abide in you. Abide in me and abide in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am, verse 5 says, I am the, the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I him bears more fruits. More, more, much fruits. For without me, you can do nothing. The Lord says to us out of John 15. Notice every branch in me that does not bear fruit. He takes away. What does that mean? If you take a, a branch out of it, out of, the, out of the tree, that branch is effectively dead because the life of the branch comes from the tree, meaning it will throw you out. Death. What was facing that boy? Amen. Death. Until he went back to his branch, went back to his home, to his father. And said, I'm not worried to be called your son. Please, just let me be your servant. <laughs> his father hugged him. Amen. And brought him back. And brought, Come on, let's party. Now you've learned. Whatever I give you next time, you will value it. It won't be wasteful. You know, sometimes it takes the harsh and the hard experiences of life to teach simple principles. I pray that God will not allow us to go to these sort of uh, hard, difficult experiences in life in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. Help me share the beginning. So church, let me prepare to close it. Let me quickly share with us only four principles. How to avoid mismanagement. Number one, please, we've been hammering on it all these six le lessons we've taught so far. And today on this seventh lesson, I'm saying it again. Please be what? Diligent. Amen. The number one thing to do is be diligent with every resource. Be diligent. You know, what, what do I mean by diligence? Be thorough. Be careful. Be cautious. Be hardworking. Amen. It's not every pound that you earn that you eat. Yes, you end it. It's in your control. It's yours. Must you eat it? It could be the extra cup of coffee that you don't need. But just to be seen to be 
you know, to be to be in to be vogue and to be fashionable, to be sociable. You also have you have your own self said. Do you live to please others? I know it may be some yes. Calculate the money you spent in the week, in the month, in the year. You'll be surprised what that money can do in some other area of your life. <laughs> Hallelujah. Proverbs 22, verse number 29. Amen. Did you see a man, amen, who is diligent? <laughs> the Bible teaches us. Hello, church of God. I'm sure you know it. You've heard me say it over and over again. Do you see a man who excels, amen, in his work? as diligence, amen. He will stand before kings. And he will not stand before unknown men. Diligent, hardworking. You are, you are, you are prudent. You are, you are careful. Amen. You can you can almost, you know, almost, yes. Trust every pound that you are an audit trail in your mind, in your head, even if you don't have it on paper, of where every pound went. You know how much to mean this month or this week. You can almost in your mind trace an audit trail. If sometimes it's on paper, so you live to your budget and it includes saving and investment. Amen. So when we see all of those flashy cars and all of these big houses and all of this, these are these are these are elements and evidence of consumption, and that is what people admire. But you need to have a financial base to be able to acquire and achieve all of this good living. I know people in the family. Oh, they want to have the best, but they don't have the financial base or foundation to sustain the best that they desire. But when you push yourself, like this young boy push at all costs, it never ends well. I pray it will end up for all of us in Jesus' name. Do you see a man who assess in his work? He's getting diligent, you know, and your money. He will stand before kids, he will not stand before men. Diligence is the antidote to what? Laziness. Amen. I don't have time. Go back to last Sunday's teaching. It's right there. Amen. Don't be lazy. Remember the parable of talents in Matthew chapter 25. Don't be lazy, rather be diligent. So when you earn the money, do not mismanage. Manage. Be diligent. That's the point I'm making. Number two, people of God. What, what must we do to avoid mismanagement? Please, let us value what we have. What I mean value, I mean protect it. It's your pound, it's your penny. If you don't need to spend it, protect it. In fact, protect it from your own self. Lock it in the way in the service that you can't reach until a year's time. If you don't need the money, don't put it at a, at a distance where you can easily reach it. Because, oh, oh, there's an enemy, a tempter, who would remind you of the suits, the clothes, the hairstyle? Who would remind you of the new car? Who would remind you and remind you of the picture of that good bank balance and, and put thoughts of what you could do? You in that car. The moment you spend the money in that car, you drive out of that car showroom, take it home, it's lost value. Bring it back the next day. You will not get exactly what you paid for it the day before. Simple. Simple fact. Let us protect, value what we have. Matthew chapter 7, verse number 6. Amen. <laughs> Scripture says to us, do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them on their feet and turn and tear you in pieces. Uh-oh. Not tear the pearls, not tear the, 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 the what is precious. Amen. But tear you. That is what happens when we don't protect our money. It's our lives that's affected. So please, your money is holy. Your money is precious. Your money is a, a resource. It's limited. It's scarce. You've had some. You no, Sorry, you have some. Protect it. That's what I'm saying. It is precious. Don't throw it to those who want to eat everything. Oh, success has many friends. Honestly, many people come around you. Your, <laughs> I can't say this enough. Maybe, yes, but when the money dries up, I pray not for us in Jesus' name. There is a parable, a proverb where I come from, that those who ate your money with you will come back and ask you, what did you do with your money? They know you have it, so they, they'll flock around you. You have to entertain, you have to treat them, you have to be nice, you're hospitable, all that. But when the money finishes, what did you do with all that money, by the way? We know you had money. Fact of life. 
Oh, let's move on. Number three, church of God. What 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 am I Holy Spirit saying to us? Number three, he says to us, please do not focus on consumption. The boy's focus was on consumption. To live the good life. Give me all the goods that belong to me. He went and he didn't actualize his desire, living large. Wasteful for the good living. A little why? We don't know how long. The money finished. Number three point today. In my principle, we must not focus on consumption. Rather, we must focus on production. How can I take this pound and make it make it torn into two pounds? How can I take this 10 pounds and, and make it 20? How can I take this 50 and make it 100? What can I do with this resource? You scan. You look at investments. You get advice. How can I have another, another, another stream of income? I'm doing this job as an administrator. I finish at, at five o'clock, get home by six. I don't go to bed until 11 p.m. I have so many hours, five hours. What can I do? Two hours, three hours? What can I do? Take your part-time job cleaning. If you are good at it, oh, you can do, take cleaning contracts. And before you know it, you have a cleaning business alongside your main income. So it's about production, not consumption. Finally, number four, amen? Please, the Lord is saying to us, think of the future. Think of a future, the days ahead of you. Yes, you may have so much now. What about three years' time? Think of the future. Have a future-oriented mindset. The young boy said, give me the goods. Let me live big now. He didn't think about 10 years to come. 15 years to come, 20 years to come. We are not to even have the family. Maybe we're still a young adult. When this all this happened, never even married. Came back home, just the way he left, only without the goods, lost everything by consumption, wistful living. Amen. Let me share with you the testimony of our King, Jesus the Christ. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. Amen. I promise you, I won't be long now. Amen. I hope you've heard the Lord today. It's not me, it's the Lord. First time I'm teaching this. I'm learning myself. I think I think I think it's the the the, the I even I even have to because I'm the one preparing the message. I, I shudder when I read this and this lesson begin to come to me. And I'm wondering, really, Lord, really, no joke. <laughs> I'm telling you, Hebrews 12 verses 1 to 3. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him. Oh, God of heaven, it was set before him in the future, time to come. Amen. He endured the pain of the cross. He endured the shame of the cross. He endured the beating of the cross. He took all the suffering. He despised the shame. He hated it. But now he has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. He's in his glory. But he had to work for it. Amen. Church, let's have a future-oriented mindset. Where will I be in the future? And work today for your future. The young man never thought about future. That this money could finish. He was he had the goods, he had the money. Let's live life. Let's eat big. Let's invest. He was in a far country. He invited people he didn't even know, I, I suppose, to spend his livelihood. It, not his livelihood. His possessions with him. And when the money finished, everybody disappeared. Amen. No more party. No more nights out. No more whatever it was they did. He ended up working as a hired hand. In the open fields, feeding pigs. He didn't think about his future. Maybe he should have. He, should, he could have. He, he could have. He could have. What if this money finishes? What will I do? Dad is not here. My elder brother is not here. He never thought about the future. Church, I submit to you today, people of God, that mismanagement can kill, can destroy. Amen. This boy fell from grace to grass. He had everything going. Because of wasteful political living, based on his covetous mindsets and consumption, that he wasteful political, he lost everything. Let me conclude by saying to us, KGC and our friends watching us now, maybe later on demand on our YouTube channel, please let me encourage you as you watch, help us to like, share, leave, a, leave us a comment. Amen. We find such encouraging. Help us to spread the word. Amen. Of what God has done for you, is doing for you. Amen. And what you are receiving in KGC. 
Thank you, Jesus. Let me conclude by saying that it's not what you earn that is your that is your wealth. Your real wealth is what you can retain, what you can keep. Amen. Mm -hmm. To do that, we must not mismanage our finances. Rather, be able to manage our finances so that God can help us. Amen. With what we have to get to where he's taking us to. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Church, it's been a joy as always to bring in the world. And thank you for joining with us. I love you and appreciate you. Remember, people of God, Jesus loves you. He loves you so much. And so do we. So if you are going through any challenge, whatever it may be, whatever kind of challenge you are going through, just hang in there. Hang on to your God. Nothing is too difficult. What? Nothing. Your God and my God can bring us through. Until next Sunday, please remember, keep the faith. The Lord is well worthy. Amen. It's well worthy for you to keep that faith in, to trust and depend on. He has promised he will bring you to. Have a great week ahead of you. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen.